Hey everybody, I'm Tyson. Welcome back to Modeling Monday. And this week I wanted to look at a process we could try where we're going to explore some geometric patterns that you could create with plywood. Now I saw this uh, from Michael Alm's channel and if you haven't seen that I will link to it in the description of this video. He creates these really cool patterns and does actually just a lot of work with plywood and grain that is fascinating so definitely go check that out but his videos were inspiring me to want to say how could we explore some of these patterns he's creating uh, really quickly in SketchUp it's pretty straightforward to do so let's get to it in SketchUp this is what we're going to be creating something like this where we're creating just different patterns and exploring different ways to create these small pieces into uh, patterns that we might say, oh, I really like that one. Now I need, now I know what I need to go out to the shop and cut. So let's start a new file and show how we can set this up from scratch. I'm going to create a simple rectangle and we'll make it three quarter inch comma 10 inches. Now that's pretty, um, we could work at that scale, but the scale is not gonna matter. So I am gonna scale this up. As long as the proportion is correct, that's all we need. So I'm gonna scale it up so we can work with it at a large scale. And to create the plywood pattern, let's say this is a really dense, birch ply, nice high quality ply. So I'm gonna use the move tool, make a copy of one edge to the other side, and then let's say 13 forward slash to divide that so that we have all these different segments to represent our ply. I'm gonna select this, I'll reverse these faces, and then color each other ply just so again, kind of get an idea of what this would look like. All right, so there's our ply. First thing we're gonna do is create these angles. Now, in Michael's video, he uses cuts at 30 degrees, which is perfect because you can combine them in many ways into hexagons. So for us, let's use the protractor tool. Stick it at one corner and say 30 degrees here and then 30 degrees here. That's our basic building block. I'm gonna trace over those edges and select just these pieces. Got a little too much here, so let me deselect here. And make a copy. All right. And the other piece let's start with, if I select just these edges, and I'm gonna copy them from here to here for the correct size. All right, now I've got these. I will select those pieces and copy those out. These two pieces are our major uh, building blocks. Just to show we could create some more. Let's say we take this one, We'll make a copy and we'll make a copy again. So this one is twice as long. So I select those interior edges and delete them. And then let's do one more where we take this piece and let's say we're gonna select this edge. We could draw that edge, we could use the protractor tool again, but since we have it, I will copy it over and then move it right here and then delete this. All right, so these four pieces are gonna be our major building blocks. I'm gonna make a component out of each one of these and um, you could name them of course. I am not going to bother because I'd be making a bunch of these unique and I'm bad at, uh, at <laughs> knowing my geometric names anyway. Let's take few of these pieces and see what we can build. So I'll just make copies of these. 
we could start with something like this. We take this, move it in place, but of course that would just be mirroring this. So let's take this one and let's rotate it 120 and move it into place. All right, so there's one example of something we could build. Let's select those, make them a component, and then make, let's say, six copies, and make another series of copies. All right, select those. So what we're using is a lot of rotating, a lot of moving and arrays. So if I do that and then say five times, so if you don't know how to make arrays with the move tool in SketchUp and don't know how to use the rotate tool, those are, those are key to doing this. But there we go. There's one pattern that's very much a pizza pattern. <laughs> a bunch of little pizza slices in there. So let's take, make a copy. Of course, these are components. So if we edited them, that would happen all the way, which is something we could certainly utilize let's say if we took these pieces and we take this one edit it actually let's copy these then edit paste this is going to get messy real quick so we got to be careful let's erase that rotate this that in there and then this one rotate this let's see and very quickly we've changed that pattern and have a different one now rather than overlapping the old one um, just to preserve it and compare I prefer to take and either copy one or copy all of these and then let's make them unique and that way we could come in and start making changes and saying, okay, now what happens if we take this piece and rotate it twice? And what does that do? And that's a different pattern. So if you take these basic pieces and start just putting them together in different ways, um, you can create so many different patterns and just have fun exploring what the options are. Maybe you don't want such a busy pattern, so you can take some of these bigger pieces, perhaps, and um, play around with those. You can also take and mirror uh, elements as well. So if I took this, let's take this pattern, mirror it using the scale tool. And then let me just grab this. I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And let's see what we can do with this one. So if we... Let's actually rotate this. 180. So let me make it a component first. Make a copy, rotate it. Gotta select these. Here. And the idea you <laughs> because there's so many little endpoints here it does sometimes you got to be careful and make sure you're lining things up correctly but there's another option that's kind of a that's cool that's a very that's a very um plays with your your brain escher type of pattern so that's kind of a fun fun version that did not know we would find that out and there it is that's kind of cool maybe we, maybe that'd be fun to go make um so 
that's the idea. Uh, let me jump, let me try and create one or two more and I'll fast forward through them and then show, in fact, let me show just, I will copy these from some early, earlier exploration and paste these in. See, these, these were created at a different scale. But as an example of, you know, here's, we created a pattern off of that one. We've created patterns off of this shape, but here's a different shape we could create. And this time, let's say we're still gonna use a hexagon. It's gonna be a bigger hexagon. So first we create that diamond. Now we've created this hexagon. It's so easy to do this and, and you can just have fun not even knowing where you're going that I have to be careful. <laughs> I don't know how long I, I've been yapping here, um, but I have to be careful because I, I, I could do this all day. <laughs> and now you've got a two hour video of just exploring patterns and that's for you to do. But just an example of that can work. Here's another version of something that came out of just exploration and that could be something that is copied this way and then maybe this is not how I combined it I'm not sure but that's part of the exploration is how does this work and could this work and if I did this I just need one more piece in there to complete this and then it will work That's kind of an interesting one too. So one more thing before you go off and <clears throat> explore this, which you definitely should, uh, is just create a simple frame and pull it up a little bit around your, your patterns. And because these are all based on a pattern, you can, once you've got the scale correctly, you can actually size your frame so it will fit your pattern and nicely, you know, meet at the edges. So that was an example. Let's see, here's another example. And one more thing that's kind of fun you can do is let's say you're getting really artistic with this because these are components, right? We made each of these pieces components. You see this one, this is flipped uh, 180. Well, if I go in and say, Okay, I'm going to make this um, ring, but I'm going to have one piece left out. And you could make that in the shop, right? When you go to glue all these rings up, you take that one triangle, cover it with packing tape, glue it together so it helps glue things together, and then you pull it away, and then assemble this larger as uh, assembly. Let's say we take that, I'm going to delete it, and maybe that. And so now we've got some gaps and if we took something and let me just move this down vertically a little bit and then look again now we can create again just some interesting you know what would this look like if we left some of these pieces out and put some colors or uh, other patterns behind that um, so just a lot of fun that you can explore get an idea of something Okay, yeah, I like that. I'm gonna go make it. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think so, if you have any questions, and see you next week.